What happened to the Project Zomboid streams? That was mostly a quantum thing, not a me thing. How many hours on Celeste? Seventy seven hours. I mean, I beat the game twice. That's it. That's all I did. I just beat the game. How many hours in Dota 2? Probably a few hundred. I played a lot of Dota in 2013. A lot. That's where all the hundreds of hours went in. When it was first released. That was I was playing competitively on Team Coast, and we would literally not play League, we would play Dota instead. <laughs> We were <laughs> I was literally playing... That was when I made LCS on that team. So, the LCS team was, uh, there was Team Coast, and we had a gaming house, and we actually had, like, a sister team, or brother team, I don't know what you want to call it, that, uh, lived with us as well, and it was Team Vortex. So, it was actually, like, 12 people living in the same house. And I had to sleep inside of, like, there's a bedroom, and then a bedroom goes into another room that goes to glass sliding doors outside. In the glass sliding doors outside, when I first, I literally just got there, and they're like, you're gonna sleep inside, like, the beach house thing. That's connected to the house, but you don't go through the door because that's St. Vicious's room. So I can't go through the door. The only way to get back into the building is to go out into the backyard, and then through the glass lighting door, and then I go back inside like that, if that makes sense. And when I first got there, they were like, be careful, by the way, I think that there's Black Widows out there, too. So that's my first experience of arriving at the team house. I remember every single night I was so scared that I was going to, like, accidentally disturb one of those spiders and I was going to get bit. Uh, 
Oh, yeah. That was also the time that... So... The team spot was sold after we made LCS, and then they gave me 0.5% of the sale, so I got, like... I don't remember how much it was, right? I think I already said it before. It was, like, 10k or something. No, or less, like, 5k. But... Uh, they had a hoverboard, and they brought it over, and I... They didn't tell me how you're supposed to get on and off of it, so when I tried to get off, because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, I tried to get off forwards, which obviously you don't do, and I sprained my ankle really fucking bad and couldn't walk on it for, like, two weeks. And we had to move to a new building as at the same time, because... And the building was far away, it was like a five-hour drive to a new house. Because the spot was sold, so we're no longer going to be living here because you're no longer part of the team, and you're going to be playing on a new team again. So I sprained my ankle, and then had to fucking go to a new place. Fucking suck. Wow, how did that bubble land? How come you're no longer playing competitively in the LCS? I've never played competitively in the LCS. I should have used Flash. I think he might die, though. Maybe not. Wow. I still remember being, uh, St. Vicious was like, in my opinion, Team Coast was like my first true team, but there was teams before then that I was on. And, like, we didn't really make it far or anything, so I considered Team Coast my first true team, even though I did try, like, going through the Challenger series before. And then I just get there and, like, <laughs> it was Victor versus Azir, like, almost every single fucking matchup. Because they were broken champions, and he... Saint would ask me if I would rather have Victor or Azir because which matchup beats which. And if I would say that you can give me either because I will beat them either way. <laughs> because I'm like, I like Azir into Victor and I also like Victor into Azir. And he's like... So... <laughs> He asked me what I think about during laning phase, and I said, I don't think about anything.
I just play the game. He's like, what do you think about on first wave? I'm like, I land my skill shots and dodge theirs. <laughs> That's it. Nothing about wave management or anything. Or what I want to do. And that's what we call talent, boys. That's what we call talent. Or that's what we call somebody playing 3,000 League of Legends game within the first two years of its release. I don't know if it's talent or that. Uh, I went to Summoner Con in like 2014, 2015. And I met Skara and I told him that I've actually messaged him before. And like if he remembers me because I'm Peek and Wolf. And he's like, oh yeah, I've seen you around. Because he was still doing some League stuff back then. TFT didn't exist. And I was like, dude, can you like give me coaching? Because I'm trying to go pro. He's like, of course I can help you. And we did one coaching session, and we were literally walking into lane. Like, I was, you know, playing, I don't know, LeBlanc or something. He's like, all right, so as the wave is coming in, what are you thinking about? And I was like, what do you mean, what am I thinking about? He's like, are you thinking about what do you want to do with the wave and stuff? And I said, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really think about that stuff. He's like, do you really not think about literally anything when you're playing? And I said, yeah. And that helped me a lot. I learned that I should probably be using my head. I was still like really high elo, like top 200 in NA, but I realized that I wasn't actually thinking enough. So I could be even better. And I didn't improve that much at all. And then eventually teams didn't want me anymore. And now I'm a streamer. Of course I did think. But it was more like instinct thinking. Like, this guy is stepping up towards me, so I'll back away, like, sidestep when I think an ability is coming out. But I'm not, like, think thinking about it. But there's things that you should think think about. Like, actually talk to yourself in your head, you know? Rather than just go off of instinct. Who's the worst matchup for Zoe? I think all assassins are really annoying for Zoe. The voices are telling me to end the enemy. Have you ever heard of the tragedy of Peek and Wolf? Yeah, that's what it should be called. Instead of my league career, it should be the tragedy of Peek and Wolf. It would start off with like Peek and Wolf might have been one of the best League of Legends players ever created in our time, but unfortunately, this, due to team disputes, he never got to showcase his actual skills to the world. Today, we're going to be going over. The tragedy of Peek and Wolf, one of the best League of Legends players to ever exist. <laughs> From a very young age, Peek and Wolf was always gaming, and he was always better than everybody else. You can say that he was a natural born winner, always performing better than everybody and all of his friends, always. Ever since he was six years old, all the girls loved him. 
and he had the coolest friends inside of elementary school. He won the popularity contest inside every school event. A popular city in China, used to be called Pekin, now Beijing, recently changed their name because they felt it was unfair to Pekin to have the same name while not being as great as Pekin himself, then name changing to Beijing. <laughs> Wait, my Gale Force didn't go to him. What? Tell the truth, impossible edition? You don't believe my story? Why? Wait, why don't you believe me? You really don't think that the reason why Beijing changed their name isn't because of me? Am I dead? Man, imagine being alive couldn't be me. Wolf reached his reach popularity in middle school where he had to have two security guards always alongside him because of how cool he was. So all of the kids always wanted to hang out with him, which made it difficult to get around the school, thus needing the bodyguards. Was that? Was that Nautilus that he pulled? It must have been Nautilus. He probably used his hook. I got the locket for you! I got the locket for you! Dude, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys the story. <laughs> okay. So, do you guys know, like, the Simpsons? I think there's a Simpsons episode and a Family Guy episode, but 
a family guy I think didn't exist when I was in elementary school. Um But there was a part where in The Simpsons Homer gets hurt, like on his knee. So he or like he gets upset at Marge. So what he does is he like gets on the ground and like spins around using his legs in circles. Like, you know, like laying sideways. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? I feel like it's like a kind of a scene that a lot of people kind of remember. Like throwing a tenter tantrum. Temper tantrum. And of course, I thought it was funny as a kid. So then when I was hanging out with my friends, <laughs> we were playing like dodgeball, like three of us around the slide after school. It was only like four of us. And they hit me once and I pretended to do that. And no nobody found it funny. And I remember I just walked home because I was too embarrassed to stay around any longer. They literally were, like, genuinely worried for me. They literally were asking me what I was doing and, like, if I'm okay. <laughs> so I just went home. I've already told you guys also that I once entered in a contest and there were two bikes and it wasn't like separated or anything and I won the girl bike instead of the boy bike. <laughs> That's why the... That copy pasta exists. <laughs> that copy pasta. So you're going by Peak and Wolf now? Haha, ah, it's me, Alex, from high school. Me and the other guys used to give a hard time. Sorry to. Sorry, you were so easy to pick on. I see you still have your girl bike. <laughs> I guess times never change. Were the bikes actually different? I don't know. I don't remember. I'm pretty sure uh, the seats of boy and girl seats are different. So that was the main difference, I think. The frame is different? Yeah, maybe the frame. I don't know, dude. I think this should be a YouTuber. Lots of great stories.